Hey guys, how you doing? This is your boy Rich from Rich TV Live, and you too can join the club at richpicksdaily.com where you can learn how to win and trade. Thank you guys. Without you guys, none of this is possible. We bring you the winners here at Rich TV Live and Rich Picks Daily, and we bring them to you first. Hi, how are you doing? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, Ryan Selby, the CEO of Poda Holdings. How are you doing today, Ryan? Hey, Rich, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me back on. Always a pleasure to be here and uh, chat with you and you know, give, uh, give you some updates and, and some information. So, Hey, it's my pleasure. Me. We love having you on the show and we love getting updates on what's going on with Poda Holdings. A lot of our members are really picking up a lot of positions in POTA right now. So we're excited to have you back in the show so we can get some updates on what's going on with the company. I have some questions for you. The first one is, it's great to have you back in the show. Can you give us a bit of an update with POTA and how you guys did a name change? Yeah, so you know, I'm actually really excited about this. And I think um, the reasoning behind the name change is there's a few reasons. One, I think to convey that POTA is much more than just a tobacco company or a cannabis company or a CBD company. You know, we have at a core level, we POTA Holdings is an intellectual property company. We have developed the world's best heat not burn platform. And that platform has applicability across such a wide range of verticals that I think it was really important to show investors buying POTA holding shares is really participating across that spectrum of opportunities. Second, the strategy to be deployed in each individual vertical market for our, our six major um, subsidiaries that we incorporated, really those strategies differ from market to market. So for example, the, the marketing and rollout strategies that we'll use in the tobacco market are quite different from the strategies we'll use in the cannabis market or the CBD market. Um, as well as, you know, on the therapeutic space, we've been having some very exciting meetings with a number of companies for deploying various inhalable molecules uh, via our closed-ended pod. Um, and then also in the beyond nicotine, nicotine alternatives space, you know, I think we really have a tremendous amount of opportunity across a wide spectrum of verticals. And I think it was important both to communicate to investors that POTA Holdings is the parent company that allows investors to reap the benefits from all of these subsidiaries, as well as to allow us to start building specific teams to, with very specific rollout models for each individual market. You know, the last thing I want to do is have a sales guy in the cannabis space going and selling in the tobacco space. Those really don't cross pollinate. And from Pole to Holdings, you know, our technology works perfectly for both markets. But from an actual sales and marketing point of view, they're quite different markets. And so really being able to build that out, I think, is a critical aspect of, of our growth. And it's something I'm, I'm just so excited about for 2022 and beyond as we start you know, generating revenue in each of those verticals. So, Now, the last time we talked, you had a purchase order of 500,000 potapods, and you recently delivered that purchase order of the 500,000 pods. Can you tell That's correct. can you can tell us a little bit and our community what that means for the company and how many pods the company has sold in 2021? Yeah, so I mean, you know, that is a fantastic milestone for us. Really that represents the first large sale of pods, but at the same time, it's really a tiny sale of pods. You know, when you look at um, you know, our our pods are sold in in 20 packs with 10 packs in a carton. So really that represents about 2,500 cartons. Um, so it's actually a, a very small test order into that space. Uh, and I think, you know, for internally, we're, we're thrilled to be actually moving from, you know, spending the last six years developing, patenting and, and perfecting, like I said, the, what we think is the world's best heat not burn technology. And now moving into commercializing that, having that order, uh, you know, that, that really just is the first of, of many, many, many to come. Um, and in our opinion, you know, 500,000 is, is a great starting number, but it really represents a, an infinitesimally small amount of what we want to do. You know, my goal is to sell tens of billions of pods per month. Uh, and so, you know, 500,000 is, is really nothing. Uh, but at the same time, it's a fantastic start. You know, we anticipate 
anticipate this customer launching into the European and Asian markets. From there, you know, the, the plan is for them to continually reorder larger and larger volumes as they enter into markets and, and begin to expand their customer base. Um, but like I've said before, when you're selling a product that contains an addictive substance, it's absolutely critical to roll out in a strategic and measured way. You know, the last thing you want is to have somebody switch to your system and then go back to the store for a restock of their, their pods and not be able to get them. You know, you have about 30 minutes from them running out of pods to them switching to a competitor or switching back to combustible smoking. And so, you know, my focus on building this business is absolutely to do it for the long term. You know, I could go out and sell all of our pods right now and, and really just move as much as possible in the short term. And I think that is that would be shooting ourselves in the foot. What we really want to do is build a loyal and solid following of customers who love our product and are able to use our product day in, day out for many, many years to come. Uh, and I think that's a really critical part of, of growing us to how am I going to sell 10 billion pods? Exactly like that, by building a very strong and loyal customer base who knows that when they switch to the POTA system, they're able to continue using that for the foreseeable future. And I think that's a, that's really our focus in building the business's strong and strategic growth in a sustainable way that allows us to really maximize the long-term future. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not in this for the short flash in the pan here. I view this as the long-term answer to an incredibly large societal problem, which is combustible smoking. And I think eliminating combustible smoking has so many benefits for society that the POTA potentially reduced risk system can really make an incredible impact in the lives of over 1 billion smokers globally. Uh, and so, you know, this is something, like I said, this is, you know, I, I'm viewing this on the 5, 10, 20 year horizon and, and looking at the competitors in the space are, you know, $100 billion tobacco companies. And for us to compete head on against them, that really takes strategic and, and thought out processes for us to actually roll into markets in meaningful ways and do it in a way that customers feel very solid about switching to the POTA system. And then once we get that customer, we can keep them for life. So, uh, yeah. Now you went to the Global Tobacco and Nicotine Forum. Can you tell us a little bit about how that went and did it help you gain some more exposure for POTA? Yeah, I mean, that was a tremendous opportunity. I, I'm, I really am so glad that, to have participated in that. Um, on you know, one level, I got to interact with all of the major industry leaders in the, the regulatory space, as well as the you know, nicotine and tobacco alternative space. Um, and I got to you know, use the POTA product with so many different stakeholders, really rub, rub shoulders with some of the biggest names in, in the industry, you know, the, some of the largest companies in the world were attending that and to be able to actually use the product with them and get the tremendous positive feedback that we got was incredibly encouraging to me. Um, and then, you know, on another level, it was incredibly encouraging to see just how much people are aware of us. You know, I think our closed ended pod technology offers so many benefits to consumers that these large companies are absolutely aware of what we're doing. And, you know, they're, they're watching keenly to see what happens with POTA. Um, you know, the, the tobacco world is in an incredible time of transition as I think, you know, the writing has been on the wall for a long time that smoking cigarettes is dangerous. Uh, and finally, tobacco companies are starting to come around to the idea of like, well, there are alternatives such as electronic cigarettes. And then, you know, in the last five years, the real uh, apparent winner in the, the, the transition from combustible smoking to reduce risk alternatives is the heat not burn space. And you know, in that space, there's basically ICOS. They're leading the way, they're doing a phenomenal job. They've converted over 20 million current smokers to their heat not burn system. They're on track to sell over a hundred billion of their heated tobacco sticks this year. Um, and you know, you look at them, they're, they're all in. Their goal is to convert every one of their customers to heated tobacco. Uh, and I think you know, that's something, that's a goal obviously that POTA shares. We wanna convert the entire smoking world away from the high risk combustible cigarettes towards a more reduced risk way of, of consuming tobacco. Uh, and then alternatively, we wanna also create effective cessation tools for people who want to quit smoking so that they have the tools to actually do it. Uh, and I think, you know, these are things that 
um, you know, the GTN app was, was tremendously encouraging for me. Um, and the, the, just being in that environment with these, you know, multi tens to hundreds of billion dollar companies and, and really hearing firsthand from the regulators and all of the different speakers and panelists there, um, you know, it was a tremendous opportunity. And I think it was something that went extremely well for POTA. Well, that's good. It's nice to hear that. Congratulations. I know investors will love to hear that. We got many investors from all over the world in our community that now own shares in POTA have been taking advantage of this recent dip. Now, POTA has been focused on ESG since its inception in 2015. Do you feel like that the industry is really pushing towards more sustainable products? And can you give the investors an idea of how POTA is positioned to take advantage of this push? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think, you know, the tobacco industry, like I said, is in a, a big transition where they're, you know, trying to figure out how to remake their image and how to, you know, switch from these high risk combustible products to reduce risk options. That also includes switching from products that basically are, are major pollutants for the environment to ways of, of reducing those, those pollutants. Um, and so that's something from its very inception, POTA has been extremely focused on. So you know, to that end on the environmental front, we've really developed a, a truly biodegradable pod. We use biodegradable filters. That is a tremendous step towards reducing or eliminating the huge amount of, of waste that's created from traditional cigarette butts. Uh, and I think that's something that's an extremely important consideration. And at the GTNF, it was something that really resonated with everybody I spoke to. Um, on the social side, obviously reducing the risks associated with combustible smoking is a fantastic societal goal. And I think it's something where POTA can offer tremendous opportunities for people to reduce the risks associated with combustible smoking. Uh, and that's something that, you know, personally, I'm extremely passionate about. I think the, the world of smoking has, has existed for hundreds of thousands of years. Um, and during that time period, there really haven't been any good alternatives. And it's only in the last five, 10 years that technology has, has advanced to a, a level that allows us to actually create ways to consume tobacco that are still satisfying and enjoyable, but reduce the risks associated with combusting the tobacco. You know, lighting the tobacco on fire is basically the simplest technology that you can have. And to do beyond that, really took an incredible amount of work from POTA and, and from any other company in the space. You know, it's much more complicated than it sounds. And I think doing it right is allowing us to create products that have, have the, the opportunity and potential to actually move the world past burning tobacco and start using it in a way that's much, has a potential to dramatically reduce the risks associated with it. Now we love understanding where the potential and the growth is going to come from next. And I know investors are keen on hearing if POTA is getting any closer to opening up new market opportunities. Can you give the investors a hint of any new markets that could possibly be opening up soon? Yeah. I mean, look, I, I can say, I can't get into any specific details, but what I can say is on a daily basis, we are receiving outreach from companies in all aspects of, of the, the combustible smoking world, as well as alternative smoking. So that includes tobacco companies, alternative tobacco companies, um, CBD, cannabis, therapeutics. You know, we have a tremendous amount of outreach coming in for people saying, look, we, we love your the closed-ended pod. We'd love to be able to put our products in this and make this happen. We'd love to sell your product. We want to put this on our shelves. We want to really expand your market as quickly as possible. And so for POTA, I think on the sales growth side, you know, there are unlimited opportunities for us to continue selling our products. And so at this point, we're really focused on building out our new production facilities. So um, we've just invested in a, a 10 million per month, pod per month production facility. We anticipate that all coming online for the beginning of 2022, which really will allow us to start hitting the ground running in 2022 with more substantial sales. Now, again, 10 million pods per month sounds like a lot, but it's really still represents only a tiny fraction of, of what we need to accomplish as a company. And so our goal is, you know, on a, every month or every two months to be doubling or more on that production level and really continuing to expand. Um, and then again, entering into those strategic verticals. So in the tobacco market, you know, we're looking at a number of different strategies for rolling into the tobacco market. 
in the, the alternatives market. We've developed our Beyond Burn blend. I think that has tremendous applicability in so many markets. On the cannabis side, we have um, a number of potential partners that we're looking at rolling out cannabis products into the North American market. And you know that model uh, would be through basically POTA supplying empty POTA pods to these companies, and then they fill and distribute them through their markets. On the CBD side, we have a number of opportunities to, to really deploy, I think, an incredible way to, to consume CBD-based products. And then on the therapeutic side, we have, uh, you know, we are in late stages now of, of putting together our, our pilot um, smoking cessation program. We're working with a university to really do this um, in a, a very strong and scientific way to be able to produce reliable and dependable results that allow us to really say this product as a smoking cessation tool has tremendous potential. Now, I, you know, I, I can't make that claim yet, and that's why we're doing the science, and that's why we're really committed to making sure that we're putting the resources behind scientific studies to validate the smoking cessation programs. But then on the therapeutic side, we also have a number of opportunities to, to roll into other inhalable therapeutic molecules. Um, and, you know, that could range anywhere from, you know, in a eucalyptus pod that you could use if you have a chest cold to you know, any number of other medicines and things that can be deployed through an inhalable system. Um, and that's something that in the heat not burn space is just unheard of to be able to say one device that can heat all of these different substances. And so as a consumer, you know, you might use a, an espresso pod in the morning, you might use tobacco pods in, during the day, you might use CBD or cannabis pods at night, you might use a therapeutic pod when you have a cold, you know, you can use all of these different substances all through the same system. And I think that's something that unlocks really an unheard of opportunity in the heat not burn space. And it's going to allow us to gain significant market share across all of these different verticals in, in different markets around the world. Uh, and so, you know, very exciting time for POTA. Um, and I think, like I said, we're, we're just laser focused on expanding production capacity and then rolling into markets around the world. We've got shareholders that have been really positioning themselves because POTA made this huge run up when you guys launched and you guys like went up, I guess, like three X, you know, went up from like, let's say 40 cents to over $2, huge run for POTA. Now it's kind of back to where it got started. So a lot of investors are feeling like this is a huge buying opportunity. Our community's buying the stock. A lot of guys are really positioning themselves. They feel it's very undervalued very underappreciated, extremely underexposed. If there was one thing you would want some of the shareholders that are holding the stock or potential investors are sitting on the sidelines thinking about getting in right now to know about POTA today, what would that be? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, like I said, the most important thing is we're not building a flash in the pan here. Uh, I think, you know, when I look at it internally, things have never been better for the business. You know, we were able to raise $20 million. We're building out a new facility. We've got so many exciting things happening. You know, internally, I'm like, man, this is like a rocket ship. And then I look at the market and I think, okay, there are macro forces and, and people have, you know, different strategies and different things are at play on the market side that, you know, it, it's somewhat frustrating to see the stock price go down, but it really doesn't phase me because I'm not worried about the stock price. What I'm worried about is building a multi-billion dollar business over the next, you know, one, two, five, 10, 20 years. And so for me, I think, you know, I, I view this as a tremendous opportunity with, you know, our, basically our price coming back down to where we, we initially listed. You know, I think this is a, a, a strong floor. You can see there's a, a tremendous amount of volume starting to trade in the stock. I think there's really um, a level of opportunity here that that shouldn't be um, underappreciated. Um, but at the same time, you know, the market is the market. Uh, we're taking whatever steps we can as a company to support the market, and you know, I, I try to bring out relevant news and, and things as as I can. And um, you know, I, I'm I'm committed to to doing what we can both for the market as well as for building the business. But I would say, you know. I'm not selling a single share. I look at this price point and I think this is a fantastic opportunity. You know, I haven't sold a single share and I don't think I would sell a share even if we're at five bucks because I know where this company can be. I know the value of the technology we've created. And I think the intellectual property of what POTA has developed is, is really so valuable beyond any of these individual verticals. I think we have the opportunity to compete 
head on or, or out compete any of the big tobacco companies in the world. And that's what really makes me so excited to say, you know, Little Poda Holdings, this little company that when we first launched, we got a tremendous amount of interest. I think our share price really appreciated very quickly. And, you know, obviously that was exciting as well. Um, and I think that, you know, really at some level is unrelated from what we're doing as a company and as a business. And so my focus really is, I, I'm going to build an incredible company here. I'm building an incredible company. We've brought on board fantastic advisors, fantastic personnel. We're really investing our funds wisely. We've got such a low burn rate. We're set for the, you know, I don't really have any concerns over the short term for POTA. I think we are in such a good position here. And internally, things are, like I said, have never been better. So, you know, on the market side, it, it at a certain level, it's beyond my control. It is what it is companies and individuals are going to do what they've got to do. You know, I, I think obviously some people sell for reasons unrelated to the company. Um, and I think that is probably what what's happened with the share price. But again, I think perhaps that creates opportunity for other investors. So now we're going to have investors that are going to see this interview that might have any some questions. What is the best way for those shareholders or potential investors to get in touch with the company if they have any questions for you or for themselves about the company. Yeah, so for sure. I, I mean, I think the best way is to send an email to investors at poda-holdings.com. Uh, you know, we we do our best to respond to every single email. Um, you know, I, I love speaking with shareholders. I love being able to just spread the good word about what we're doing as a company and, you know, my vision for the, the future of where I want to take this. Um, and so I think, you know, Email is probably the best way. Um, you know, also we we have a phone number um, that people can reach out to. Basically, I would say go to the website www.poda-holdings.com. There's a ton of information on there as well as contact info and and email and and all of the above. So um, that's probably the best way to do it. Alternatively, you know, they can ask you, and I'm I'm happy to you know come back on your show and and be able to answer questions with Rich and and be able to get those answers out for. For, you know, a wider audience. So um, all of the above, you know, I'm, I'm committed to uh, a transparent and, and good corporate governance. So uh, basically, I, I'm, I would say, let's have the questions as they come in. And, and I look forward to answering them. So. Well, we really appreciate you joining us today, Ryan. And I must remind everyone that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research, before you invest in anything that we talk about or discuss here on Rich TV Live. In saying that, I do this, I do believe this is a growing company that's underappreciated, undervalued, underexposed. You've raised $20 million around $2. Uh, we're right around 50 cents in Canada. So I think that the upside is tremendous. There could be an opportunity for a multiple for investors. So definitely, I think it's important for everyone to put P-O-D-A in Canada, POTA, P-O-D-A-F on your watch list, P-O-D-A-F in America. If you're not winning, you're not watching. We bring you the winners and we bring them to you first. And thank you for joining us today, the CEO of Poto Holdings, Ryan Selvey. Thank you for having me, Rich. Always a pleasure to be here. Keep doing what you're doing, buddy. And you too. And I'd love to invite you back. Anytime you have big breaking news, any catalyst, anything you want to talk about, love to invite you back on the show. We've got a lot of investors that really believe in Poda and hold stock and are going to continue to buy the stock at these lower levels. And hopefully the next time we speak, there will be some big breaking news and we can celebrate. Well, I'm working on it, buddy. So uh, let's, uh, let's look forward to the next time. Indeed. Keep up, keep up the great work, Ryan. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we'll talk to you soon. And thank you guys for watching. Like I said, if you guys are not winning, you're not watching. We bring in the winners and we bring them to you first. Thank you for watching, everybody. And have a nice day. <laughs>